Hello, today we're going to be talking about the Scythe Grand Tornado. It's a brand new fan from, well, Scythe fans, and it's a 3000 RPM monster. Let's get right into it and discover what is truly awesome about this fan. First, a little bit of spec information about it. We got the Grand Tornado. Uh, it's got two versions of it, a 2000 RPM and a 3000 RPM. The review today is going to be talking about the 3000 RPM, but I wanted to list out all the specs so that you could see all the details. Uh, we got the amperage. It is a higher amp fan to get that higher RPMs. So note that you may not be able to connect more than three fans to a single fan header, and then that would be the limit of that single fan header. 3000 RPM, the CFM, the millimeters of H2O, the noise level it generates, as well as the mean time between failures, meaning uh, actually that, that's more like the number of hours they expect before the fan fails. And I've got a couple other fans listed up here too. The Wonder Tornado, which is the exact same fan, but it uses a uh, different bearing. Actually, I think I got that incorrect. It uses the original one, not the version 2. I do apologize for that uh, uh, typing error there. But everything else on there should be correct from the spec sheet. And notice that it has a shorter lifespan, projected lifespan. Uh, I would like to add lifespan testing into future uh, pieces as this channel grows. And then I wanted to include the Wonder Snail. And these are some of the newer fans that feature that scythe blade design that we see in a lot of more modern fans. So next, a little bit of brief explanation about what's going on with the bearing. Incorporates a second generation uh, sealed precision fluid dynamic bearing. It's just their second generation of making it and some other things. I'll leave it up for a couple more seconds. Smooth operation, high speeds, mean time between failures up to three, thir 370,000 hours. That is a truly long lifespan for a bearing. And another quick thing, a quick comparison between the Grand Tornado uh, it's a nine blade fan and the wonder tornado and you can see that they line up nearly identically uh, obviously this is pictures and trying to line it up so not everything lines up absolutely perfectly but you can see that they more or less do line up and then i also have the wonder snail on the other side it is pretty obvious that the wonder sna snail has a much smaller hub than the grand tornado and the grand tornado is also thicker at where it meets the hub but if you're tracing it it's nearly the same thickness as the Wonder Snail at approximately the same distance. But they definitely have gotten the distance between the blades and the housing much closer with the newer generation of fans. So it's really impressive to see Scythe iterating the, their designs and basically greatly improving the overall um, design process behind it. Now a little bit of now onto some more specific graphs. First is the case simulation test. Uh, this is just basic information at the 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100 RPM ranges and what it looks like as uh, at those RPMs as you get farther away from it. And the reason it's important is you want to spec out a fan that is best suited for your particular size case. So the 6-inch mark is your small form factor cases. Basically think of being able to hold one 120 fan in terms of the length of the case. And all these are assuming a front-to-back airflow type design as opposed to the ultra compact ones which suck in air and blow it out the top or something like that. Uh, then we have the 9-inch mark which would be a compact tower. So the GP would be the length of an ATX motherboard, uh, assuming approximately being able to hold two 120mm class fans in terms of the size of the case, the length of the case. Then we have the 11-inch mark. This would be your standard mid-towers. It would be able to hold three 120s, so a 36mm, um, a 360 millimeter radiator uh, would fit in this size case, but not any larger than that. And uh, next we have the 14.5 inch mark, which would be like your full towers, something like the Proc Design Torrent, where it can fit 340 millimeter class fans uh, in terms of its length. So you do want to pick out a fan that'll be good in your size case. Bigger cases are harder to fill with air and keep the air moving front to back through it. So you do want to pay special attention to that. Now, how do we compare these fans? Well, I like to do a basic uh, baseline comparison with my control fan. The control fan is base three parts A12X5 to one part A14. So it's a blended to make a composite 130 millimeter class fan. And we have the Grand Tornado here in blue and the Wonder Snail here in red. 
I'll have another video for the Wonder Tornado in a separate piece. So you can see that uh, Scythe has already made a lot of improvements with the Grand Tornado in this noise normalized value. Uh, using a normalized value at 11 decibels, cancelling out the ambient room noise. Next, at 100% p and fan signaling, well, RPM here matters, and the Grand Tornado spins at approximately 3,000 RPM. So it just crushes the other two fans, my control as well as the Wonder Snail. Uh, you do will note that it is quite a bit noisier. It is approximately 2 decibels noisier. Uh, I don't know if you know, but decibels is not a linear system. It, every 10 decibels is approximately a doubling in noise volume. So five, do, five decibels would be 50% more noise. So two decibels would be almost 25% noisier than the Wonder Snail. Uh, next, how does it compare against other fans I have tested? Well, here's the Grand Tornado. It's sitting smack dab in the middle of the pack. It's not a bad place for it to be. The Wonder Snail is sitting down here in this kind of brownish orange line. So the Wonder Snail is what I consider the bottom end of what I would call a good fan by the time you hit the a larger case at 14.5 inches. So the Wonder Tornado is certainly hitting a better middle ground, but is not, it's, I would call it adequate at bigger cases, but it's definitely more primed for the 6, the 9, and the 11 inch mark. How about at 100% PW fan signaling? Well, once again, the Grand Tornado is sitting more or less in the middle of the pack. The fan selection here was to pay more special attention to higher RPM fans. Mind, I wanted to also make sure I selected fans that um, ranked well overall in other tests. So the Grand Tornado certainly is doing pretty well here overall. How about in terms of uh, noise versus air speed? So the 9 inch mark was chosen because it's where a lot of fans tend to drop off steeply. It did an air speed over 0.5 meters per second. So that's why that um, distance mark was chosen, but this same analysis can be applied to any distance. But as air speeds drop below 0.5 meters per second, I feel the data becomes less reliable using my current anemometer and testing methodology. So the Grand Tornado is basically sitting right here in the middle of the pack. It's not a bad pace, place for it to be, but it isn't the best. Uh, the A12X25 is a little bit better than it, as well as a few other fans. I also have the Wonder Tornado featured in it, and they line up very closely, except for as RPMs increase or airspeed increases. And RPM and airspeed are related. Two thousand RPM. I'd like to pause for a moment and say that uh, I have a Discord page if you want to discuss fans, and I thank all the people who have joined me on Patreon that are helping support this channel. It's going a long way in making all this testing possible and making, well, a couple small purchases on fans, specifically in the Apex Stealth uh, review. Uh, I do have future plans where I'd like this channel to go if I uh, get enough support and grow large enough. So if uh, you like what I'm doing, you like what you're seeing, and would like to see this channel grow, I encourage you to, to join or uh, just joining me as a uh, subscriber and continue to watch these videos goes a long way. Anyways, let's get back to the regular program. Taking a look at performance through my CPU air cooler. My cooler is the Noctua U12A. It is a thicker, larger um, single tower heatsink. So that's why it was chosen for this, to try to pick a sort of middle ground between a radiator and a classic air cooler. I am in the market to purchase a um, thick radiator to do more as an AIO, well not AIO, radiator testing. So hopefully I'll be able to incorporate that at some point in the future. But until then we're going to keep going like this. So in true pressure applications things may change. 
while this one is sort of halfway in between air, open airflow and um, a true pressure scenario. So, so we do see the Grand Tornado outperforming my control fan as well as the Wonder Snail uh, by actually quite a bit. And if we take a look at the noise versus airspeed, uh, we do see that the Grand Tornado is slightly outperforming my control fan, which is an excellent result. So overall, it's looking like a pretty good fan for an air cooler. Let's keep things going. How does it compare against other fans I have tested? These are noise normalized results. And we see that the Grand Tornado is shifted well towards the top. We have the Wonder Snail and it's well towards the bottom. So truly an excellent result for the Grand. Some other notable fans we have on here are the Apex Stealth uh, with its result at 1.2 meters per second. We have the A12X25 on here with 1.3 meters per second and the Unifan P28 at 1.7 meters per second. So that is the fan to beat currently in my testing. So overall, it's not a bad place for it to be. How about at 100% PWM fan signaling? Oh, and I also forgot to note, uh, this testing was again done on the Noctua U12A. I did some testing and I have approximate thermal results for given air speed with an accuracy of about five watts on that watt reading for a given airspeed. Using my CPU, which is an 11700K, depending on what cooler you're using and your specific CPU, there are variances in this. This is only wattage variance for my specific system. What we can glean from it is how effective each fan is in its respective positioning. So once again, we have the Grand Tornado. It is positioned towards the top, but there are fans that are better than it that spin at 3000 RPM, as well as, well, the Unifan P28 is only spinning at 2500, and it is pushing more air through the specific cooler. Uh, another thing to take a note, take a look at, is how much noise these fans are generating at that given speed. So once again, the Grand Tornado is generating 28.9 decibels, while the P28 is only generating 24.8. The A12X25 is down here at 1.9. So you do need to, the A12X25 is gonna be perfectly adequate for most coolers in most scenarios. Uh, what you do need to pay attention to is what your actual performance needs are. Um, I specifically chose fans that line up more on the upper end of the graph, but in most cases, 1.9 meters per second through this cooler or that specific fan is going to be adequate for your given system, but if you're pushing the limits and wanting to get the maximum, that's when you start looking at the upper end of the graph. How does this fan perform in airspeed versus decibels? Once again, the Grand Tornado is here in yellow. We have the T30 here in this white and blue. The Grand Tornado is outperforming the uh, T30 in terms of noise. We have the A12X25 in here and as a blue line. We have the Wonder Snail down here. Oh, the Wonder Snail and the A12X25 have the same, approximately the same color. This one is the A12X25 because I know it by its maximum air speed. And we also have the Wonder Tornado here in purple, as well as other fans. But the end result here is overall, it's doing pushing a good amount of air without it being too specifically noisy. How do in a really high pressure application, I can't say for certain, but based on these results, I would say it should do uh, perfectly fine in most AIOs and moderate density uh, radiators. Again, can't say for ultra high density ones. On to my least favorite test, it is the CFM test. Basically in CFM testing, you blow air down a tube and you measure the air speed or volume coming out the back. So you you would measure the volume by knowing the surface area of the back and the airspeed going through it, and you get that calculation. I personally think this test is invalid for comparing fans in a case type scenario, a computer case. Uh, calculating CFM for measuring airspeed through radiators and stuff is perfectly valid though. I have a whole rant if you want to hear why I don't like this test. Uh, otherwise, I'll just go through the graphs rule. So first and foremost, for whatever reason, Scythe fans do terrible in this specific test for me, and they vastly underperform, well, the control fan in both the noise and RPM versus CFM calculations. I don't know specifically why they do. 
but uh, the CFM test is one of the areas that I want to revamp as this channel grows and I'm able to uh, like redo everything about the way I test it to become the definitive source on fan testing. But we have noise normalized, how it compares against other fans, and the Grand Tornado and Wonder Tornado are way down at the bottom. The Wonder Snail is down there too, and we see a bunch of other fans way up higher. At 100% PW fan signaling, they are still right at the bottom, so we're going to just keep moving on. And once again, no surprise that they do terribly in CFM versus decibel readings, so let's just keep this moving. Value. These fans I found for $20, so that is the baseline price I'm considering uh, for their value proposition. Do note that currencies change and the price of them change, but this calculation is really easy. You just do just do meters per second per dollar. I do add a multiplier factor to it. It's just 10, just so the numbers are big enough that it's easy to read rather than tiny decimal points. But anyways... So the first one here is the six inch mark, noise normalized and 100% PW fan signaling. We got the Grand Tornado here. It's at kind of what I call middle of the road, both at uh, noise normalized and at 100% PW fan signaling. It's not a bad place position for it to be, but there are other fans that are just a significantly higher value. Again, value isn't maximum performance, it's performance per dollar. So if you're on an ultra tight budget and trying to get the most computer for your money, Value is where you want to look. If you've got extra wiggle room, that's when you start picking out quality. Again, I have no idea how long the bearing will last. That is future testing I'd like to add. Um, next, we have the 11 inch mark. Next, we're taking a look at the 11 inch mark, how these fans' value ranks up. The Wonder Tornado is better than the Grand Tornado. The Grand Tornado is not in a bad position because the 11 inch mark is particularly hard for the fan most fans to push air to, so it's doing pretty well overall. At 100% PW fan signaling, it's doing downright great. Mind, it's not the absolute tippy top, but it is close enough there that it gets that it's a good value fan. How about in CFM testing? Well, here is where it all falls apart for it. Again, don't know particularly why the fan tests very poorly in it, but it's it does. And last but not least is how the fan performs in cooler testing. The Wonder Tornado is a better value than the Grand Tornado. Mind, the Grand Tornado is what I call above average, but again, it is a far cry from the top value fans. At 100% PW fan singling, they rank towards the top, so definitely uh, appears to be a good choice if you're trying to push, well, your system to the max. And with that, that wraps up this video. This is the raw data. Uh, this data does belong to me. I generate it. It takes me about one and a half to two hours to generate this level of detail in my testing analysis and more hours to update graphs and record and stuff like that and, of course, edit the video. But um, if you like what I'm doing, I ask that you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you really like what I'm doing and really want to help support this channel so that I can grow and make better videos, upgrade my whole testing methodology, better microphones, better instrumentation. Um, please think about joining me as a YouTube member or joining me on Patreon. If you would like to ask questions, discuss fans or computer cases, uh, join me on Discord. It's linked in the video description down below. Um, other than that, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day, and I hope to see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.